Smart wearables always have some sort of emphasis on health, but what about a dedicated device that can track way more than its little size suggests? Well, that's exactly what this smart ring is all about, and it turned out to be a very important tool in tracking my recovery during a rather intense health scare. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here are um, my thoughts and my experience with the Aura Ring Gen 3. You're probably familiar with the Aura Ring. Uh, Aura claims it is one of the most accurate health and particularly sleep trackers out there. But the term sleep tracking is a little simplistic. There's actually a whole list of metrics that the Aura Ring keeps an eye on while you're sleeping, which all come together into a score that lets you know where you might be right now in terms of your overall health. That information can inform you in various ways. Uh, either you're just getting a general look at your wellness, or maybe you're a very active individual and the ring will help you understand your recovery from things like physical activity. I've used the previous generation Aura Ring for a long time, and while tons of that data has been available to me, my Gen 2 ring admittedly was more of an accessory that just happened to be smart. That is, of course, until something pretty big happened recently, and just a month after I received this Gen 3 ring, no less. See, one of the most interesting claims by Aura has been that the device can detect the early signs of illness, and detect it throughout. Well, there was no other way for me to put this, um, but the Aura ring not only could tell me that something was wrong, but it also documented my entire ordeal when I actually got infected with COVID-19. Okay, I've said the big word, so let me put a few things out there before I continue. I'm only sharing the experience that I had with the Aura Ring thus far, both in general and during my illness. In no way is my video supposed to be taken as medical advice, nor is the Aura Ring supposed to be a replacement for the kind of care that you should seek out if you ever do get sick with basically anything. Put rather simply, the ring ended up being a way for me to really know certain metrics of my recovery, which culminated in symptoms passing and multiple negative testing for confirmation. I am back to 100%, thank goodness, which is not something that some people I know can say even weeks after battling it. So, as I say at the end of every one of my videos, please take care of yourselves and each other. So what exactly is the Aura Ring tracking? Well, the same things it would even during a normal day. The sensors on the ring are all working in tandem to measure various things like heart rate, heart rate variability, body temperature, and for good measure, there are sensors in the ring for tracking activity. While a simple ring you leave on at all times is really convenient for tracking steps and mostly cardio workouts, I will say having it on for things like weightlifting might be a little bit more precarious. It's also not fully comfortable to have it on when you're trying to grip bars and metal anyway. The rest of the information, though, is really important for assessing your current health, and it all happens when you're asleep. During sleep, the body is at its most stable, which would be when you want to have all of your matrix to be basically at their best. An elevated heart rate, a higher temperature, or a low heart rate variability could all point to your body not being at its best for taking on too much during the next day. By the way, if that one term heart rate variability or HRV is new to you, it's an emerging piece of data for assessing one's wellness. This might be a bit of a crude simplification, but it's basically measuring the spaces between your heartbeats. Regardless of what your heart rate actually is, the variability should be high, meaning that the spaces should have a really good mix. A heartbeat of 68 beats per minute might be good overall, but it fits pumping at the exact same interval every single time. That's still a sign of at least some stress. What you want is a heart rate that is, well, more loosey-goosey. Like any good health wearable, the Aura Ring makes its assessments based on historical data, meaning you're going to have to wear it all the time so that you can figure out what your baseline is. Every Aura Ring will set itself up for every individual, creating a blueprint that is different for every user. As it gets a better understanding of where you usually are, it can tell you when your body is out of sync, by even the slightest degree. And that brings us to the app, which Aura has outfitted with a lot of data and a lot of tools. The main thing you'll see on the main screen is a readiness score, which ends up coming up after you update it uh, because the data is being sent via Bluetooth from the ring to the phone. As I was just mentioning, all of the different measurements come together to give you an easy snapshot of your health. Tapping this will give you all of that data. You can see your heart rate, you can see your heart rate variability, even your body temperature, and any activity that it detects or that you log in the app, which will help it assess your restfulness. Move over to the sleep tab and you get your more classic sleep detection. Everything from the various cycles to how long it thinks it takes you to fall asleep. Having used the Aura Ring system for a long time, I have never really found this information to be dramatically different from what I thought I was actually doing. And because this is a ring, and thus particularly undisturbed compared to like a smartwatch that could move a little bit more when you're moving in your sleep, I'm personally confident that it is tracking accurately. 
So based on all that data and the score, uh, you're given suggestions of what you can do uh, to get better sleep or to recover more effectively. On this particular day when I am filming this video, I actually have a lower readiness score. I did do a workout yesterday, but I did also go out last night and have some drinks and ate kind of bad. That's why my readiness score is a little bit lower because when I was sleeping, I had quite a few things that were a little bit out of whack. You can see here that while my lowest heart rate was 69 beats per minute with an average of 79, uh, the main thing that it is telling me is that my heart rate variability was kind of low at 20. Up here, we usually see that my heart rate variability can trend upward compared to what I had last night. So the readiness score and your sleep score will give you suggestions as to what you should pay attention to. Obviously, it says pay attention. Down here at the bottom, it'll tell you what your bedtime generally is. As you can see, I went to bed past 2 a.m. last night, which definitely didn't help. And it's telling me that my ideal bedtime, as it has been telling me for a while, is just before midnight. So all of this data is important for various types of people. Of course, it's important to recover well after rigorous activity. And if your body is not back into fighting shape, even more training or workouts could do more harm than good. So for athletes, this can be a great tool for tracking performance levels. But for those who are just trying to get better sleep, the Aura Ring also provides extra tools for better mindfulness. Studies show that mindfulness practice helps improve that all important heart rate variability, the metric that I explained earlier, and sessions of meditation before bed can help improve sleep. So Aura have provided a number of different guided meditations and breathing exercises, and they're all in the explore tab here. Of course, if all of these different exercises are not really for you, you can always just trigger an unguided session if you go over here and trigger an unguided session so that you can use the mindfulness practice of your own preference. The ring will simply be there while you sit and breathe through your practice. So this is how the Aura system and the app, of course, bring the data into context. For someone with a good daily routine, it all comes off as information that just never dramatically changes. But that's, of course, until big things do happen. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I'm going to scroll back in the timeline and you're going to see how the readiness score, which is up here, um, while I have it generally high and around the 80s up here, you can see that it is fairly consistent, especially when I have a good daily routine, but then it will change pretty drastically right around here. It was right after CES, and while I did everything I could to be safe during the show, I still got infected. I do want to take a quick second, though, and say CES itself was a great time, mostly because there were so few people. But since it wasn't super crowded, their safety protocols felt very well implemented. So, I don't think it was necessarily CES that gave me COVID. It was Las Vegas. Still, I don't regret a thing. CES was around January 3rd, which obviously because I'm at a trade show and I'm actually working every single day and maybe not sleeping when I should be, the readiness scores were kind of all over the place. There were a couple of times when I did actually get some good rest and whatnot, uh, but you can see that near the tail end of it, I was definitely starting to feel a little bit different, and this readiness score uh, confirms that. Coming back home, I did get a readiness score that was getting a little bit better, but my first positive rapid test was on this particular day. Unfortunately, the Aura Ring was out of battery, so I don't have any data here. You see, the ring can last for about a week between charges, but I didn't keep up the habit of like incidental charging every day, like putting it on the charger when I'm uh, taking a shower or anything like that. But nonetheless, the positive test result meant that I had to quarantine for a while. We were actually already at a hotel, so we just extended that stay and continued to quarantine. Isa was with me, taking care of me the entire time, and she never got it, thankfully. But you can see here that for the next three to five days, oh man, I was dealing with the worst and most painful case of sore throat I've ever had. During one particular morning during these days, and you can see my readiness scores are abysmally low, uh, Isa asked me if I felt a fever because I did feel warm. Personally, at the time of her asking that, I didn't really feel like I had a fever, but the ring was telling me that during my sleep, I was definitely having a higher body temperature. And you can see it at its worst here where I'm at plus 4.2 Fahrenheit. Again, the ring is creating a baseline for each and every user. And in my case, if I'm at plus four, for anybody at a normal body temperature, that's still pretty much in the triple digits. You can also see here that my heart rate variability was very bad. If I click on it here, obviously it would increase over time as I recover, but it was at this pretty much bottom depth at this particular time. Uh, the heart rate variability that I had last night at the time of filming this video was 20 milliseconds, and this is less than half that. Other metrics make it very clear that I was going through something. Actual heart rate was maybe 15 to 20 beats per minute higher than usual. And one other interesting point that was tracked was respiratory rate, which I never actually paid much mind to. Given the nature of the infection, I was lucky that it didn't actually affect my ability to breathe, but clearly I was under duress because I was breathing three to four to five times more per minute here, as you can see in respiratory rate. 
So compared to everything that I've shown you so far, you can see that the aura readiness score it was at a real bad low. During those five or six days that I was uh, with my illness, I could check the app every morning to see if my numbers were actually improving. And sure enough, it was starting to get a little bit better after those number of days, but I still stayed in that hotel room throughout that particular week, and thankfully I had Isa there. I was also really happy to have the Apple Watch in particular because I had to lean on it for a few other metrics. Certain things like blood oxygen level, which is incredibly important to track during a respiratory infection. Not to mention my iPhone and the Apple Watch are what are connected to my continuous glucose monitor, through which I always have an eye on my glucose levels. The Aura Ring is supposed to be capable of blood oxygen level measurements too, but that's a feature that's still on its way via software updates, alongside other features like menstrual cycle detection. So as you can see, I'm going to keep scrolling through here. While the worst of it was over, it took a solid two weeks until I got back to higher resinous scores, which are usually accompanied by that little crown. I don't always get top numbers normally because I don't always get the best sleep. Uh, so it was actually really great to finally see the crown appear when it did during my recovery. Various factors can affect your scores like what I was showing you earlier with my readiness score not being great um, today because I was out drinking and eating bad last night. But nothing was more dramatic in showing the capabilities of the Aura Ring in tracking everything I was going through than with my bout with COVID-19. And so there you have it, a real look into the Aura Ring and how it tracks your health and how having that information can provide valuable insight. Again, I was just sharing my experience with the ring and its application, and nothing in this video should be taken as medical advice. Seek care if you do feel any symptoms at all, no matter what it might be from, and do what you need to keep yourself, your loved ones, and everyone around you safe. For more on self-improvement and health tech, subscribe to my channel. Let me know your thoughts by hitting that like button and by getting into the comment sections down below. With all that said though, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.